turns out that documents that were released reveal that agency officials had been dismissing evidence that public lands provided numerous benefits in favor of prioritizing fossil fuel interests, along with the interests of ranchers and loggers. Big surprise, here you have the government uh, saying that, you know, the Department of Interior, head, headed by Ryan Zinke, saying, oh no, we love corporations, uh, we love these companies, and we think that we should prioritize them over anything else. Now, what's funny, these documents were released and then quickly retracted, like, oh no, oh no, no, I, I didn't mean to release that, I didn't mean to release that, give it back, give it back. In fact, um, let me tell you what they actually wanted them to do, uh, but first, uh, according to the Washington Post, thousands of emails sent between Interior Department officials had dismissed the benefits of establishing national monuments. Now, that included evidence of an uptick in tourism and archaeological discoveries. So those are some of the reasons that we would like to keep these areas. Um, especially from exploitation. Also, the fact that maybe it's nice to have an area that is not exploited by oil and gas or, or mining uh, or anything like that. Uh, now, under uh, Ryan Zinke, the agent intentionally, uh, agency intentionally tailored a survey of protected sites, emphasizing instead the value of fossil fuel extraction and other industry endeavors. Now, look, if you're a conservative, isn't part of being a conservative conserving things? What happened to conserving the environment? I mean, apparently that is no longer their part of their uh, part of what conservatism actually is. Basically, what they want to do is just conserve money for the rich uh, and corporations. Wonderful, uh, but hey, at least we know what they're all about. Now, the Interior Department had actually released these documents in response to a FOIA request. Freedom of Information Act, sending them to journalists and advocacy groups on July 2016th. Then the agency then removed uh, the communications a day later, saying that they had been posted in error. Oops. In fact, uh, officials said, it appears that we inadvertently posted an incorrect version of the files for most recent National Monuments production. We are requesting that if you downloaded the files already, please delete those versions and we'll send you something else. Wait a minute. Yes, just go ahead and delete those documents that indicate that we what we actually believe. And we believe that all these monuments are eh, not necessary. No, we we want these monuments to be exploited by natural gas, by industry, by mining, uh, by logging companies. That's what we believe in. Now, the briefly released emails contain numerous redactions relating to a review of 27 national monuments requested by President Trump in April of 2017. Now, look, um, the reason that they redact those, of course, uh, is because, well, we, we don't want them to know about the process. Want to bet, I don't know how much you want to bet, if they do end up releasing these again, they will still end up being redacted. Just saying. Uh, but anyway, now Zinke, uh, in response to Trump's request, uh, who once pledged that selling off our public lands is a non-starter, conducted a four-month review. So much for a non-starter, right? The final result was a recommendation to shrink at least 10 monuments and modify six others. Now, Trump has already shrunk two of those, Bears Ears and Grand Staircase Escalante in Utah. Those monuments, by the way, will now officially be open to mining on Friday. So, this week. So congratulations, these national monuments now belong to corporations. They can mine in them at their pleasure. Now, of course, a lot of people are angry about this. Um, and we're especially we're angry about the review, uh, including indigenous communities, environmental advocates, and lawmakers. They said that that review at the time was full of inaccuracies and that the debate, uh, the process lacked transparency and that the emails released last week appear to corroborate those accusations in showing that Zinke's agency purposely warped the review. So I think that's the most damning thing here. Yes, we knew that they were going to put corporations over people, profits over people, uh, and allow these companies to go in and mine and log and, 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 and do all that stuff. But the interesting part about that is that now we have evidence that 
the office uh, of Indian Interior, headed up by Zinke, warped the review intentionally so that they could have these industries be able to go in there and and uh, mine in these in, in these national monuments. Now, the revelations also build on previous emails obtained by the New York Times and back in March. Now, those revealed that oil and gas drilling were a key incentive for the Trump administration to shrink national monuments. A uranium firm also lobbied for the downsizing of Bears Ears. And throughout the review process, the new documents show interior officials buried material that would have justified the current size of the monuments under scrutiny. In one instance, Interior de uh, Department redacted comments from a Bureau of Land Management officials finding it unlikely that the Obama administration's designation of Bears Ears as a national monument greatly impacted timber production. So, again, they're burying material, they're obfuscating, they're hiding, so that they can have these industries come in and be able to do whatever they want, which will end up making them money. That's what this is about. In another email, lead review staffer Randall Bowman advocated for deleting language about minimal returns of commercial fishing near the Northeast, Canyons and Seamounts, Marine National Monument. This section, while accurate, Bowman wrote, seems to me to undercut the case for the commercial fishing closure being harmful, meaning that it wasn't harmful and that they should have kept these monuments the same size. They didn't have to shrink them. Instead, what they did is officials seemingly sought out information to support industry efforts. 